linear with increase in temperature. That simply means for equal change, a linear change means that we have exactly same size of division for all uh, values of uh, temperature. So for whether temperature changes from 0 to 10 degree, or 10 to 20, or 20 to 30, you have exactly the same uh, change in the length of mercury column. This is how Uh, which are which are more significant How resistance changes with temperature. And we want to make a scale which may be used as a resistance thermometer. This is a temperature that we denote by capital T. Uh, we assume that at zero degrees Celsius it has a certain non zero resistance. Of course, it does not drop to zero when uh, the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which has a certain resistance already. But what happens to the resistance when we increase the temperature of that object? It depends what that object is, what it is made up of. It may be uh, a metal, it may be a semiconductor, so we are not sure exactly what shape of this graph is going to be. So, uh, since we are not sure, we can assume uh, any shape. And the curve is something, something like this. This simply means that initially we have a certain resistance, but after a certain change in temperature, the resistance changes by this amount. So if this is the change in temperature, this is the change in resistance. Then we increase the temperature by the same value, by the same amount. I mean, if this was 0 to 5 degree, this is 5 to 10. So by same interval, we are changing the temperature. But the resistance does not increase that much the size of the change in resistance is now smaller. See, this was that bigger change, previous uh, 5 degree, uh, corresponding to previous 5 degree Celsius, and now for these 5 degree Celsius, the division is smaller. And yet another 5 degree Celsius change results in an even small change in resistance. So the size of the change in resistance goes on becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And let's say uh, this is the calibration curve that I have to use to show what will be the size, the estimated or the relative size of the scale without using any units. We are just uh, 
going to show what this scale should look like. So let's say uh, at zero degree we have a certain uh, resistance. Let's say this is the resistance. But with increase in temperature, with increase in temperature, the resistance is increasing. But initially, the size of the division is large. But with further increase in temperature, the size of the division is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is what the scale should look like. If I make it a bit uh, wider scale, let me go to that other end. So we use all this available space. So we, this is something the scale should look like. So initially, the size of the division is large, but that doesn't mean the change in temperature is large over that region. The change in temperature has been same. It is same for this interval, it is same for this interval, it is same for the next interval. But for each interval, the change in resistance is becoming smaller and smaller. Without going into the type of material, without going into the reason what's going on behind it, that is none of the uh, concern of this chapter, it doesn't deal with this, why this is happening, but we just have to look at the curve and decide what should be uh, the size of the division relative to the next one. So we clearly see that for equal change in temperatures, uh, the change in resistance is uh, becoming smaller and smaller. Initially it's large change. But then it is smaller, then it is smaller, then it is smaller. If you go on creating these equal divisions, you have all those usually it becomes like this. So the size becomes uh, very, very small. And that is why we have a very small division at the end. So if this is 0 0.5, this is a uh, uh, 0 to 5 degrees Celsius, this is 5 to 10, this is uh, 10 to 15 and so on uh, until we have maybe 90 degree or 100 degree. So this is a scale which shows uh, the temperature. This is a temperature scale and this is a non-linear scale. A non-linear scale simply means that we have uh, uh, different sizes of uh, divisions. So, for equal change in temperature, the change in resistance is not same. So, nonlinear change in uh, the resistance in any physical quantity that we are studying, and as a result, we have nonlinear scale. But what, hap what happens when the curve is opposite? What this curve will look like? If it is initially a small size of the division and it increases uh, as we go to the higher temperatures. Let's have a look at that curve as well. For convenience, we take it as a resistance again, but this time we assume that uh, at T. Uh, zero degrees Celsius, which has some resistance, let's say it has a non zero value, but with increase in temperature, the resistance increases in this manner. Now, for zero to five, there is a very, very small increase in resistance. So, if you see, this is hardly uh, a significant change almost uh, zero change in resistance. If we carefully see that difference, uh, maybe uh, a few ohms, maybe less than that. But five to 10, it is slightly bigger change. 10 to 15, it is still bigger, 
then 15 to 20, it is a sizable change. Then 20 to 25, it is a more significant change. And then we go on making it. And you see that exactly opposite to this is happening. So if you are given, uh, if you are required to make markings on this scale uh, based on this curve, obviously you will make a very small division in the beginning. Let's say this is the initial resistance of it. Uh, and then this of course shows zero degree Celsius because this is this scale is not. Uh, showing the resistance, this is showing the temperature. So if uh, the scale is here, that is not showing any resistance here, that means it is uh, zero degree Celsius here. And when the, when the same point that is here, that means it is five degree Celsius and so on. So although it is the resistance which is uh, changing with temperature, but we see on the scale is not resistance, it is the temperature. So it is the thermometer scale and this is actually the idea of calibration curve that we study one thing varying with the other and uh, indirectly we are reading something which is more uh, useful for us, which is of interest to us. So we are not interested in knowing what is the resistance there. Uh, as long as the size of the division or the initial final values are concerned. We just want to see uh, what is the temperature when the scale is here, what is the temperature when the scale when the point is here. So it is actually the thermometer scale. So similarly, when the pointer is here, that means it is zero degree, and when pointer is here, it is five degree, then ten then 15, then 20, then 25, then 30, then 35, then 40, and if the scale allows, maybe it goes to 50 or 55 or 60. Uh, as long as the range is concerned, we can make it as big, as convenient as possible. But on this particular scale, it appears uh, from the space of the river, it may be from 0 to 45 degree Celsius. So this is the kind of scale we have. Uh, the important thing to note is that this is opposite to this, uh, where the size of the change in resistance was large in the beginning because the curve was rising. And then it flattened a bit as we move to the higher values of temperature. Here we see the opposite. Initially, it is relatively flat curve because there is a very small change in the resistance but as we move to the higher values of temperature the change is becoming more and more significant because the curve is rising up. So this is what we have to note in the calibration curves before uh, we attempt any uh, answer uh, especially in which we have to calibrate or make markings on the scale. One example uh, on which we have a question in the exam is the, the, the scale that shows uh, the fuel uh, consumption in the, in the cars. There is, a, there is a scale that shows how much fuel you have in the car. So there is a pointer moving on that scale. And that scale is based on a curve, which is, which is something like this. The curve shows, uh, this is uh, the angle, the angle that the pointer moves. Let's say the pointer is initially uh, here. That means there is no fuel in the tank. So pointer is at zero angle, zero degree. 
but this angle will be very large, something like this, when it is uh, full to its capacity. So let's say this is the uh, full, this is fuel actually. And when the tank is full, uh, it is the maximum angle that we have. Here. So in between these two extremes, this is the maximum angle. Uh, if I appear, so it is maybe 90 or even greater, let's say 100 degree. So let's say this is 100 degree through which it moves from this to this. When uh, we have uh, the fuel tank is full, we have the maximum angle of the pointer which is on this extreme. But as the fuel consumption goes on, as you move a certain distance, that pointer moves to the left, obviously, showing how much is consumed. But what if you have to show uh, what size of the division, if I uh, divide this in equal amounts, let's say this is uh, exactly one half of what you have, this is one fourth of it, what happens when uh, you have exactly one half of it? Now this time, you see then uh, you have consumed exactly half of the fuel, this scale does not come to this pointer does not move to exactly half of it because the curve is not going this. The calibration curve uh, insists that you show the size of the angle uh, smaller. If you have consumed half of the, uh, if you have consumed three fourths, that means uh, this is uh, this is the full full amount of the fuel in it. This is half, this is uh, this is one fourth of it because I have half this, half further. So this is one fourth of the fuel. So what if one fourth of the fuel remains in it? One fourth of the fuel remains mean your angle will be close to one half. So when your pointer is here. That means you have consumed one fourth of it. When you are here, that means you have consumed half of the fuel. And now this means you have one fourth of it because this is this is uh, the change in the uh, pointer position, which is on this scale is almost a half of uh, the allowed values of the angle. So this is through fifty degree that this uh, pointer will move, then uh, you consume the last uh, one fourth of the fuel. But you will also notice one thing, that even when uh, the pointer is uh, showing zero here, the fuel is not zero, because this curve is not touching here. This is also done intentionally to avoid any convenience because we often uh, run out of the fuel, the scale goes to zero and we still have no uh, fuel station around. So it might take another few kilometers before we refill, uh, refill the tank. So this is intentionally done in the fuel tanks. So you need to understand two things on this curve. One is that this curve shows the variation uh, of the angle of the point. If it is somewhere in the middle, according to this curve, that means you have one fourth of the fuel left. Usually, it is marked in the fuel gauge. Uh, they have uh, different colors of stripes showing how much is uh, left, how much is consumed already. But the important thing is the size of the uh, division is different or different amount of uh, fuel consumed. So if you have consumed half of it, uh, this pointer moves to approximately one fourth of the full scale and you have consumed 
three-fourths of this and only one-fourth left, the pointer appears to be somewhere in the middle of this dial and uh, it moves relatively uh, through larger division now if you consume the last one-fourth of it and even if it goes to zero as the scale is shown, even if it goes to zero, the fuel is still not zero, there is still some fuel in the tank. As I said, this is intentionally done to avoid any inconvenience that is caused because of uh, uh, the empty uh, fuel tank. So this is the calibration curve. This is uh, the last topic of our uh, uh, chapter number two. With this chapter number two uh, is complete now. Uh, I'll share a question or two based on this. There are questions. Uh, but since we have time, a few uh, two minutes time, I will uh, introduce you to the next topic that is time -wise. So let's start a discussion on time -wise. Automatics is our chapter three. Automatics uh, is the study of that branch of physics in which we uh, deal with the motion without worrying about what force is acting on the object, what is the mass of the object. Uh, the object may be moving at a constant speed, it may be having an acceleration, it may be at rest. So without worrying about its uh, mass and the force acting on it, we describe the motion, motion of that object, whatever its motion. This chapter starts with a comparison of uh, distance and displacement. So at least that would be discussed today, distance and displacement. Distance is the actual length of the path that we follow when we move from one object to another. So this is a point A and this is a point B. There are several ways we can reach that point B. We can move from any side to approach B. So the actual length that we follow in order to move from point A to point B is the distance. So if I move in this direction and then continue along this path and then arrive here, I have moved a slightly larger distance. But in all these cases, whatever distance I take, the minimum possible distance that I can take and which is directed from A to B which means initial position to final position, this is known as displacement. So while I am moving from, uh, uh, from A to B following this path or this path, there will always be a displacement vector that develops alongside. So displacement is therefore not the actual path that we follow but this is the minimum possible uh, length of that path that could be taken if possible. If there was, uh, there were no obstacles, if there were no buildings uh, in our way, we can go straight from our home to our school. So we always go straight if there is no obstacle because that is the minimum, that is the most convenient uh, path possible. So displacement is the minimum possible uh, path from the initial position to final position and whether we take that path or not that will always be there and that will be used to calculate velocities. Uh, distance is always a positive quantity. Distance is always positive. Distance is not taken negative if you go from A to B and then come uh, back to A, 
the two things add. You go a kilometer and you come back a kilometer, you have traveled a distance of two kilometers. But this is not the case with displacement. It may be positive or negative. Displacement is positive in one direction, positive in one direction, in one direction, and negative in the other. It is, it is, the displacement simply is positive in one direction and negative in the other. That means while distance is not zero, never zero when we move in a closed path. In a closed path, which means we come back to our starting point, we come back to where we started. So closed path means maybe in a circle, maybe in a uh, rectangular path, you come back to exactly where you started. Uh, distance is not zero in that case, whether it is a small closed path or a very large closed path, you travel around the world and you come back home, you calculate all that distance that you have traveled. But if you have uh, gone all places and you come back to your initial point, your displacement is zero because for each positive displacement, there must be a negative displacement, which is equal and opposite to uh, the displacement in the other direction. So in one direction, it is positive, in uh, the opposite direction, it is negative. So for each positive displacement, there is a negative displacement of equal magnitude. So the total displacement in a closed path is always zero. So total displacement, displacement is zero in a closed path, in a closed path. And if uh, we need to add, obviously this is understood, is a scalar quantity and this is a vector. The spacement is always taken a vector and the distance is always taken uh, a scalar quantity. So, kinematics starts with this topic. We have a similar comparison of uh, speed and velocity as well. Speed, it's easy to understand now. We have similar comparison of speed and uh, velocity. Let me quickly uh, discuss that and then close. We have speed and velocity compared. Speed is a rate of change of distance. So if you are moving along this, suddenly you are taking certain time. If you divide all that distance divided by the time taken, you have speed with which you have moved, the average time. Similarly, if you have moved along this curve and you divide by the time taken, that will be the speed. But while you are moving along this, your displacement vector is developing side by side, and the rate at which that uh, displacement is taking place is your velocity. So rate of change of distance is speed and the rate of change of uh, displacement is velocity. That means uh, velocity and displacement may have very different values. So it's not just the magnitude of velocity is speed. That is not the case. So it could be different values. Then uh, speed is always positive. By distance, speed is a positive quantity, but velocity is uh, positive in one direction and negative in the other. We will learn in this chapter and in the next that velocities uh, of the objects thrown upwards have one sign and the same object coming down uh, have opposite sign velocity. So uh, positive or negative could be taken positive in one case and negative in the other as long as we know 
how to handle it. So positive negative uh, will be the main feature of uh, our discussion in this chapter why positive velocities in one case, why negative velocities uh, in some cases. So that will be uh, the case when we are trying to show the change in direction of an object. So velocities have direction. Similarly, speed is not zero when we uh, move along the closed path because it is the distance traveled divided by time. But if over an interval of time we move in a closed path, the average velocity becomes zero. The average velocity, average, average velocity. Possibly velocity is zero in a closed path. If I come back to uh, the same position where we started and divide by the total time I have taken to move from that point to somewhere else, some other point, and then coming back to that point, the average, I mean, all the uh, displacement added divided by the time that will zero. So just because the displacement is, the displacement is zero, uh, because we have come back to the same initial position, the velocity is also zero. So this is the comparison uh, of speed and velocity, of course, similar to uh, this, the distance and distance. So this is uh, the basics of uh, kinematics. We we'll go on uh, discussing these things, but uh, on Wednesday, inshallah. Thank you. For this.